Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Salalipop and this is the Frigo Shotgun F4. Now this is technically an electric cargo bike since it can seat multiple people at once or carry a fair amount of cargo with a rear rack attachment but it has more of a retro motorcycle style with this larger front headlamp and the dual crown suspension fork that looks pretty cool, which makes it different than your typical cargo electric bike that would be lower to the ground and have a longer tail end. The F4 has a top speed of 28 miles per hour, which still makes it a fast bike despite being able to carry that extra cargo, and it has rear suspension for added comfort, so overall we have a lot of good features to go over. And for those of you that watch my channel, you'll recall that I made a video on the Frigo F1 Pro model in the past. Uh, I'll link that video in the description below if you haven't seen it yet, but a lot of you seem to like that video a lot, so when Frigo released this brand new F4 model, I knew I had to give it a shot and review it. And if you are interested in this bike after my review video, I have a link in the description below where you can get $100 off a Frigo bike. Uh, all you have to do is click that link in the description and then enter the discount code to Lollipop when you're checking out. Okay, let's get into this review by first talking about the assembly process. The F1 Pro I previously built was a lot harder to assemble, but luckily this one wasn't too bad. It's a bit difficult to take the bike out of the box since it is pretty heavy, uh, but that was probably the hardest part of the build. The main box comes with another box of accessories that has some tools and other parts you need for the build, as well as a metal phone mount. One nice thing they did here was actually package the brake rotor separately so it does not get bent or damaged, which is something I complained about in my review of the F1 Pro since my brake rotor came very bent on that bike, so I'm happy to see that they addressed that issue. I would recommend having at least two people to build this one since I often needed another hand to hold up the bike while I adjusted different parts or something like that, but I will say that the brakes came adjusted well and the drivetrain wasn't too bad either, so overall a nice build process. All right, now let's move on to the specs, starting with the price. So this bike retails for about 2,300 US dollars, which is a lot of money, but I think it pretty much stays on sale for around $1,899 on the Frigo website. So for that money, let's see what you get. Talking about the frame first, the main thing to mention here is that it is a bit longer to accommodate that rear seat pad, so you can have another person sit with you on this bike, which is pretty cool. And on top of that, you also have these included foot pegs, so your passenger is more comfortable and has a place to put their feet, which is definitely a needed feature. The rear seat pad itself is not very padded, so it does get uncomfortable after about 30 minutes of riding or so, but you can do your own quick fix for that by adding a blanket on top or something to add comfort. The main seat pad does have a lot more cushion, but it is a stranger's shape since it is a bit narrow, so overall I think these pads could be a bit more comfortable, but they're usable for the bike. And you are able to swap the rear pad out for a cargo rack that Frigo also sells on their website for $100, so you can remove the seat pad with this one screw that holds it in place on the bottom, and then you can attach this rack by bolting it onto the frame with the included bolts. You can add racks from other brands as well, so you don't have to get the Frigo one, but I measured it myself, so I'll put up those measurements on the screen right now, but as you can see, it can fit a good amount of stuff, so that's good. <laughs> I will note that it was slightly difficult to assemble it since some of the holes were not lining up properly, so there are some issues with it, and there were some impurities in the metal that I can see, little dots and stuff here and there. Uh, so for $100, I would prefer something a little bit more higher quality, uh, but it is durable at the end of the day, so not a bad option overall. Now Frigo says this bike is designed to fit riders who are 5 foot 3 inches tall to 6 foot 4, but I will say that for shorter riders it is a bit more difficult to get on top of the bike because it is a taller frame. Uh, for reference, I'm around 5 foot 8 inches in height and it comes up to my hip here, and here's what my leg extension looks like while riding, so it would be a little cramped for someone who is taller than 6 feet as well, but you could sit further back on the pad if you are taller. Besides that, the bike can also handle a max payload of up to 330 pounds, and the bike itself weighs about 59 pounds, so not too crazy heavy for an e-bike these days. The bike does have some cool frame details, like these Frigo logos cut out on the sides of the metal here, uh, which is seen on most of the Frigo models. And overall, the look isn't bad in my opinion. Uh, you kind of either like it or hate it, it just depends on the style of bike you're going for. Uh, and this green color does make it stand out if you're into that. For more details, you also have this attached hard case that you can store a good amount of stuff in, so that's pretty useful. And you have a kickstand on the left side here to prop up the bike. They also include this metal phone mount, which I actually was surprised by since I like it a lot. Uh, it's all metal so it feels very durable, and it secures my phone super well. And you can of course adjust the size of it to fit your phone size, but yeah, I like this accessory for sure. And like other Frigo models, this frame is made from steel, not aluminum, 
and that makes it heavier and more susceptible to rust, which is unfortunate, but it will be stronger overall. All right, but now let's go over the battery and motor. Per the Frigo website, this bike comes with a pretty good size 48 volt, 20 amp hour removable battery that is located right here in the middle of the bike, and that is paired to a 1000 peak watt motor located in the rear wheel hub. These numbers are fairly common for powerful electric bikes around this price point, so I have no issues here, and it lets this bike reach a top speed of 28 miles per hour, which is amazing. To engage the motor, we have a throttle on the right side of the handlebar, and that works perfectly fine, but you also have five pedal assist modes, so you can pedal to engage the motor at varying power levels. The pedal assist modes are good for cruising and saving battery life, but the throttle is definitely better if you want to go fast, since the gear range on this bike is a little bit more limited, so you find yourself kind of pedaling in place a lot if you try to go fast using the pedal assist. The F4 has a claimed range of 25 to 40 miles, which is a bit less than other e-bikes around this price point, so that's something to note, but it's still fine for most day-to-day -day riding. And for charging the battery, you can plug in the included charger into this port on the side of the battery right here, or you can remove the battery entirely by using the included key, and then charge it off of the bike. The battery also has a USB port on the side so you can charge your devices, which is a useful feature. But now let's move on to the display screen. This one is actually really simple and intuitive to use, uh, just a basic LCD screen that we see on many Freego models. So you turn it on by first turning on the battery switch here on the side, and then you can hold the power button in the middle of the screen, which wakes up the display so you can see your battery life, current speed, odometer, and the pedal assist mode that you're in, which can be changed via the plus and minus buttons. You can also change the power output by pressing the middle M button to change how much power the bike will give you in case you want to restrict your bike's top speed or something like that. From here you can also turn on the front and rear lights at the same time by holding the plus button. And actually this front light is very very bright. Uh, it seems brighter than the one on the F1 Pro so that's a great upgrade. And we have a nice red tail light that is fairly bright as well so that's good for safety. And now let's move on to the mechanical components. So we have front and rear suspension on this bike, as mentioned before, uh, but they're nothing too high-end, and actually the front fork isn't even branded, so I don't know much about it. It does provide some comfort while riding, though, definitely more so than not having it, so i say it's good enough, and it does look cool, so that's a plus. The fork has a compression knob on the right side here, so you can turn this to make the fork fully rigid for having more efficiency and going faster on flat areas or on the road, but besides that, there's not much adjustment. And one thing I should mention is that dual crown forks like this one do limit your turning radius. I haven't had any issue with this while turning on the bike, but that's something to note if you do want to take this on very curvy roads or trails or something like that. For the rear suspension, uh, we don't have too much branding on here either besides this ticker that says Super Sport Worlds Innovation Technology Design. <laughs> uh, but it looks pretty similar to the shock we saw on the F1 Pro. And in that case, it's nothing special and is likely on the cheaper side. It adds a cooler look to this bike, which I think is the main point of it, but that being said, it's not really intended for full-on mountain biking, but it does provide some comfort on the road and on light trails, which is of course better than not having it. The next parts we have are the wheels, which as a whole are one of the biggest differences between this Frigo bike and other models. So first of all, you can see we have full coverage metal fenders on this bike to protect against rain, mud, and rocks hitting you and the bike while you're riding, so that's great for weather protection. On other Frigo models, we typically see 20 inch rims with much wider, fat sized tires, but on this one, we actually have larger 24 inch diameter rims for a faster rolling wheel that helps this bike accelerate quicker. And we have narrower 2.4 inch wide tires, so overall, a lighter wheel set that's better for the road and light trails, and that improves the handling a bit as well, so you'll see that on the test ride. And for the brakes, this bike does come with hydraulic disc brakes, which is great for having better stopping power and performance. Uh, they are DY Island branded, and I haven't heard of this brand before, but they are pretty decent and stop the bike pretty well, uh, especially since this bike has 180mm wide brake rotors for much better stopping power, which is definitely a good update from the F1 Pro that had smaller rotors. The brake levers themselves are ergonomic as well and look pretty nice with this kind of carbon fiber look and design, and they have some adjustment points too. And the final component I'll talk about is the drivetrain. And this is the same one on the other Frigo models like the F1 as well. It has a large front crankset up here to maintain speed. And it has the smaller freewheel in the back, which is not very high end at all, but it works fine on an e-bike. Now this bike comes stock with a lower end, older style Shimano tourney derailleur. And this is a very low quality part. It doesn't shift well, it bends easily, and 
it's not great to see it on a bike at this price point. But derailers are fairly inexpensive for lower end drivetrains, so you could swap that out. And I personally haven't had any issues with this as I mainly use the throttle and the pedal assist works pretty well. So it shouldn't really matter that much since it works fine for getting through the gears this bike has. But now let's take this bike out so I can give you my final thoughts on everything. All right, riding the Frigo Shotgun F4. I'm gonna start off on the road for this test ride, then move on to some hills and then finish it off with a nice little trail ride so we can kind of see all the parts of this bike and how it does on all of those different terrains. So starting off with a little speed test here on all the pedal assist modes. So right now I'm on the level one pedal assist. It's chilling at around 9, 10 miles per hour. I have my speedometer on the phone right there so we can fact check the, <laughs> the display there. And it looks to be about the same 9, 10 miles an hour. And then kick it up to pedal assist two. <laughs> does accelerate fairly quickly. Uh, chilling at around 13.8, 14 miles per hour for pedal assist two, so not bad. Guess we're going up a slight incline now, pedal assist three, going up much faster. Woo. 19, 20 miles per hour on pedal assist three, and then pedal assist four, 23, 24, 24 miles per hour. It's getting pretty windy now. <laughs> and then pedal assist five, or just gonna use the throttle now. 26 miles per hour. We are going up an incline, so it is taking a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, 27 now. And 28. Woo! And of course, you can go even faster, especially if I'm going a little bit downhill. So now it's hitting 30, 30 miles per hour right there. And brake check. Oh yeah, the brakes work beautifully on this bike. I have no concerns, no issues there at all. Okay, now we'll do a bit of a hill test. This is a fairly steep hill around my area going up here. I'm on pedal assist five right now, so it's going pretty fast. It's not gonna hit the 28 miles per hour for sure, especially on this steep of an incline. But I mean, let's see if I can go down a little bit. Pedal assist three, still going up. 18 miles per hour, that's pretty good. Let's see, pedal assist two, going a little lower. Yeah, yeah, just maintains it perfectly fine. I gotta say like this bike on the road is pretty comfortable. The suspension actually works really well. I have it, uh, you know, plush on, on the fork itself, but I could lock it out even to make it a little bit more efficient, go a little faster. And now it's like fully rigid in the front. So getting that efficiency in the front, but still have that comfort in the rear with the rear suspension. You know, I, I mentioned that suspension is uh, not that comfy, not that high end or anything. It's a pretty cheap uh, rear shock on this bike, but for, you know, being that cheap, it's actually surprisingly good. <laughs> At least on the road, you know, like on the road, I feel fairly comfortable. The really, really the only thing that's uncomfortable about this bike is that seat pad that I'm sitting on, which is of course a, a big part of your comfort on the bike, but you know, your, your butt starts getting a little sore after 30 minutes, like I mentioned. So overall, this road test went great in my opinion. I'm gonna go down this hill now, <laughs> kind of see how fast we can get and make sure the brakes still work fine and all that. Woo! Oh my gosh. All right, guys, now it's time to hit some light trails. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Went into that one pretty fast. I'm on full full power right now. I'm gonna kick it down a little bit just to be a little safe. Pretty light path here. Uh, not too much loose gravel or rocks right now. Just pretty much dirt. And this bike feels just as it did on the road. It feels totally fine. Now we're hitting some gravel, some looser rocks and stuff. So this bike honestly handles pretty well. I've ridden it on a lot of trails already similar to this like more gravel trails like even on this loose rock and everything like it means it maintains the traction pretty well it may not have the fat tires that we see on all other frigo models and a lot of other electric uh, mountain bikes you don't need fat tires to have a comfortable and safe ride on a on a bike so i think this is honestly a really good decision by frigo to spec these smaller tires on the bike to kind of cut down a little bit on the weight and also give you a you know, a lighter, faster bike that's just a little bit more day-to-day -day friendly. You know, you don't want a fat tire bike all the time. It's pretty bulky, pretty heavy. Like, you know, like there's some pretty sharp rocks at this point. This is kind of just, woo! <laughs> but it's a good test, you know. I have the suspension, uh, not fully plush, but enough that I feel comfortable on it. 
you can start to hear a little bit more noise as I'm going over these bumps and stuff. But man, like it is surprisingly comfortable on trails, on construction zones, whatever you want to call it. Like I'm having a great time on this bike. In terms of the suspension and keeping the bike grounded, making sure it's, you know, has enough traction and everything to get through, it is totally fine. The seat pad is getting pretty uncomfortable as I'm on this area. Especially, woo! Oh boy. Oh, that was a little loose, but the bike handled it fine. <laughs> Got a little sketchy there, but it's all good. And, oh boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> just straight up rocks at this point that was really fun guys <laughs> all right so i gotta say i do like the bike uh it has a lot of the good features from the frigo f1 pro i reviewed in the past but it improves on them even more by including like these bigger brake rotors the better uh, assembly process and the lighter weight so it is an overall improvement and although the f1 pro seemed to go a bit faster at times than this one this one still has a great top speed and feels fun and feels like a good bike to be on so i'm definitely happy with it my main downsides for this one are that the seat pad isn't the most comfortable thing and it won't really be easily replaceable either which is unfortunate and i do wish we had that better derailleur at this price point but overall it's not bad so if you're looking for a retro motorcycle style bike that can also carry that extra cargo or an extra person but still go fast on the road and on trails this is the bike for you all right but that is it for this video everyone thank you all so 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 much for watching me and supporting me and my channel i hope this video helped you out in deciding if you want to buy this bike or not and of course if you do check out my link in the description below and use my discount code so you can get some uh, money off and save some money there but besides that thank you all so much for watching and remember to keep biking out there